Later that morning on location, work begins on a scene with co-star Eleanor Parker. You see, films is not a, an actor's medium. It's a director's medium, producer's medium, a cameraman's medium. It's the medium of the technician. It's a fascinating, marvelous, marvelous medium. Perhaps about once every 10 years, a part is written that is, is really worthwhile for an actor in film. For most of the time, it's what it's completely a visual medium. There you, you, the best performances given in movies have had no dialogue at all. Witness the bicycle thief, there was hardly any dialogue in that. And shoe shine, that film. And there was no acting, they were really actually doing it, and the director was molding it and making their life, creating their life for them. My, these are, this will be my second, really, major picture. The two I made before were slightly sort of smaller budgets and not quite such sort of huge feature films. And the Fall of the Roman Empire and this are really... And I waited purposely till I was in my 30s to, in a way, to start. And I feel more ready to go into films, having had enough sort of backlog of training in the theater. And if, if for instance, nothing worked and I, I wasn't any good and I didn't make a sort of mark in films, I could always go back to the theater as a sort of insurance policy. But a, a stage actor does suffer from un ennui a bit in movies. I try and study what happens behind the camera, which fascinates me, because one day I'd like to direct a film. It would be a marvelous, ideal situation if I was to direct pictures and act in the theater, but I don't know if that'll ever come true. Robert Wise, producer and director of West Side Story, tells why he cast Christopher Plummer in The Sound of Music. Everybody knows Chris is one of the very top actors, I think, in the, the world, the Western world. And we had hoped that uh, in the case of Captain Von Trapp to, to make the character of the captain more than uh, uh, a bit of a kind of a cardboard cutout that we somehow felt he, he was in some ways in the play. And we felt that somebody of Chris's stature that could bring the kind of qualities of acting and performance to it could make, make much more out of the captain than might possibly be on the page, literally. The funny thing about movies is that if, if you don't make a, a, a large amount of money, the powers that be in the film industry don't particularly respect your talent. They, most of them, I'm afraid, judge talent by the amount of money you make. And so you have to demand for these out, outrageous sums, most of which you don't see, of course. But I'm afraid talent in the most picture industry is usually based on how much is he worth. And if he's a quarter of a million dollar actor or a half million dollar actor, the half million dollar actor is going to get the best pickings. I am amusing, I suppose. Do we have the finest couture in Vienna? Cut. Nobody happy? That's the print, please. That's the print, please. All four. All right, camera reloading. Good morning. Good morning. I've had a kind of bad reputation because I do get angry at rehearsals. I don't mean it personally. I, I do try and suggest things. Perhaps sometimes it isn't my job to suggest. But one must to survive. And if, you, if one has an idea, one must speak his mind and get it out. And of course, a lot of people don't understand that. And they think you're treading on their toes. They think you're taking over the boss's work, the director's work. And whereas you're, you're not really. You're just trying to contribute. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you want to go a little more, you can. This way. Oh, yes. This is the one. Yeah, now, yeah. step back, Chris, would you please, uh, before you move in? I suppose, in a way, that's what one is. Why one is called difficult. People don't understand the word. It's a true kind of temperament that an artist must have. Impatience with stupidity and lackadaisical and people who don't work at their job. And you discovered your um, musical leanings were a dividend, I gather, from chatting with us. Well, I, I, I'm hoping I'm, I'm quite recorded them all. Yes, yeah, so let's not be too uh, sure. But. Uh, yeah, he knew, he, he knew how serious I was to try to, to sing in it. He was very nice and told me <laughs> quite early on that it was possible that I could be dubbed if I didn't want to. 
Meaning but somebody I'm, else could uh, then do yes, the singing voice for that's you. That's right. But I, I don't want that. I mean, that's not the point. So I'm going to, I'm really, really insisted on trying to sing. Did you know at the time that you first talked to Bobby Wise who your, la your leading ladies were going to be? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that was one of the reasons I decided to do it. I think if it had been, honestly, anyone else, I wouldn't have done it because of, of Julie Andrews. Thank God, great. In order to eliminate background noise in a busy Salzburg square, Julie Andrews sings to a playback of her own voice, while the camera captures one of her Rodgers and Hammerstein songs in widescreen technicolor. All righty, roll it. Well, I, can, I can't think of really any dark moments. I'm, I've been terribly lucky, rather spoiled, in a way, I've always worked. I've never been sort of broke. I've been lucky, and I don't know so much about those waiting years, because I'm one of the fortunate ones that was most of the time working. Mm -hmm. But I still, everything in ratio is the same in a way. I was, it was all gnawing at my vittles, you know, all the time. I was always sort of wanting to do better things, and I have chicer things than I was in at the moment, or more important productions. At least I was working, but I wanted to be in that one over there, you know, not just in mine. Piano in the lounge of Salzburg's Hotel Bristol, the actor unbends. The best reward in the world for an actor is to have a, an, an audience who can hate and love him, who can listen, who can criticize audibly. take away with them, even if they haven't understood the entire evening in that actor's life. Because an actor does spend a lifetime on the stage every night he works, there's no question about that. No matter what role he's playing, he... If they take away one tiny, tiny bit, that's the best reward an actor asks for. It doesn't even have to be the play, it doesn't even have to be the actor. It might be a thought that was thrown out in the night. And the actor can always tell somehow in what part of that audience that reaction comes from. And can always appreciate it in some sort of extraordinarily funny way. What does happiness mean to you, Chris? Happiness? Mm -hmm. I love the word. Happiness has always sounded like such a roundedly square word. I... It's cubic. Absolutely cubic, mm -hmm. the word happiness. It's nothing to, it has nothing to do with anything to me. Sadness means everything to me. Because sadness... gives birth to comedy and tragedy. Sadness gives birth to talent. Most talent comes from sort of sadness and an inability to express oneself in one way so one desperately clings to a sort of another tact and kind of reaches it through that. And through their sadness, some marvelous things happen. All beauty is sad to me and funny. to talent. Can it be defined? No, you can't break talent down. You can only nurture it and build it up. Because I suppose every one of us has talent. And if we had the opportunity and if we had 
or you had the background, or if we'd had sometimes the money and the chance and the freedom to express it, freedom most important. We would all be talented at something. Some of us who, who are exposed to the, to the public in some way or another, in, in, in drama, in, in, in music, in art, or whatever, are so fortunate to be able to to have the chance. Some of us fail miserably, you know. We know where the men are separated from the boys, but does the world know? 